Hi guys and girls. Tonight we're going to continue on with our Toolmakers Clamp Kit. Tonight specifically we are going to be working on the screws. The captive screws and the floating screws. Two of each. We're making two clamps. Here is our stock of half inch diameter 1215 easy machining steel. First thing we're going to do is divide our stock in half, uh, clean up the ends, face the ends, uh, center drill one end of each, and knurl the other end. Let's go over to the lathe. Okay, there's our four pieces of stock. We will face eight ends. Just using my three jaw. Just a touch with the file to break that sharp edge. Nobody likes a sharp edge. I'm going to use power feed for a nice finish, but that last time was a little slow, so we'll speed up the. Okay, that's enough facing. I'll bring you back in when I'm done. Okay, we will put a center drill in uh, the end, one end of each piece. Okay, next thing is we're going to knurl the opposite end of these. I'll get set up and... Two guesses as to the country of origin of my knurler. That'll give us a nice grip. Anyway.
Don't worry about the length. Get a good three quarters of an inch knurled on there. Okay. Our four pieces knurled. I'm just going to throw a little chamfer on the end there. Take away those sharp burrs there. Happy, happy chamfer. Okay, on two of our screws, they get this groove. The groove is five eighths of an inch from the end. I'm using a one sixteenth parting blade here. So I'm going to find the end by using this razor blade, single-sided razor blade, very handy in the shop. Right there. Now I'm going to use my magnetic back dial indicator to measure off that five-eighths of an inch zero there one two three four five six twenty five point six two five I'm going to plunge until I find the stock. Right there, I'm going to 
turn my cross slides uh, dial to zero and we are going to plunge we're going to plunge an eighth of an inch That's not bad. Uh, I'm going to go a little deeper and a little titch wider. Oops. Uh, that seems pretty good. We can always come back later, but for now that seems pretty good. Same again on the next one. Looks pretty darn good right there. Uh, we can always come back and open that up after we uh, do our final assembly. That uh, 1215 is pretty nice to work with. There's our two grooves for our captive screw. Okay, girls and boys. Okay, girls and boys, we are at the mill. We are going to be doing the cross holes in our screws. In the case of the captive screw, the cross hole is a quarter inch from the end, and in all cases, the they're three sixteenths diameter. Let me show you the setup here. I have a call block set up with uh, starting with uh, some captive screws. I uh, have the ball bearing edge finder in the drill chuck. We'll find our center line of our screw and we'll find this end and enter the information accordingly on our DRO. Just out of sight. Zero my Y axis.
by one half. my y-axis to zero and lock it. Now we'll find the end and bring in our stop. The center line of the spindle is exactly 11 millimeters off the end of our work. I will enter, I'll switch over to millimeters, X11, enter, switch back to inches, 0 0.4331, that's just what we want. Done with our edge finder. Center drill. Well, we need to put our stop. I'm just thinking about counter boring. We can, putting a chamfer on there, we can do them all later. We'll set up the depth stop, do them all later, or do them as we go without a depth stop. Focus. All right, that one's about perfect. This one is all chattery and way too deep. Maybe I'll use my hand chamfering tool. Okay, 
the second captive screw. We'll put this countersink away for now. four cross holes back to the lathe okay girls and guys we have our our knurling done our retaining clip groove done uh, we have our cross holes drilled now it's time for threading this won't fit in my collet nicely anymore it, that does uh, disturbed knurling the material that the knurl pushes up messes up the collet so your kit comes with a little bit of half inch water pipe take a hacksaw and cut an eighth of an inch out of a piece of water pipe now we can use this to protect our knurling while we're in the three jaw. What you're gonna do is, 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 you're Back with our knurling protector. Tail stock support. Good. We have good access there and good access on. Yeah, we're looking good. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, 
take say 20 thousandths off the OD set my uh, dial to zero and we'll see where we're at We're going to cut these threads with a die 5 24. 5 16 fine. I'm going to turn my diameter to a few thou under the nominal 5 16 just to make our lives easier. We're looking for 310. My dial is set at zero right now. Let's see where that's brought us. This is not my chronometer work, I would say. This is 473. Zero on the dial equals 473. So we got about 163 to take off. Let's go to 140 and see where uh, where we end up. I'm going to uh, speed up this feed rate too. We can fiddle with the shoulder afterwards. The uh, copper collar did a great job. Our turning tool. Reset my stop. I want to stop right about here. Bring in our tail stop. axis on this end. We're ready to go.
as the work heats up and cools off it it expands of course and pushes your tailstock makes your tailstock come loose Three twelve, three ten. That'll work. Okay, one of our captive screws. Okay, more of the same guys. I'm going to uh, fly through these. I'll be back when, uh, bring you back when I'm done. Okay, we've just made our last pass on the fourth 312 I'm getting. Which will work just fine. So guys, get yourself a pad of paper and a pen. If you went for coffee or supper or something, Came back you might have forgotten that number had that number written down worked great for all four screws put our chamfer in the end here That's it, we are ready to thread. Okay, we have our 5 16 24 die in the tailstock die holder. Now, let's see if we can get this to start on here. Using the chuck key and the chuck. Okay, that's going well. I'm going to set the lathe up for the slowest speed. I'm going to use my jog button. And power thread. Let's see how we're doing.
Okay, girls and guys, we've got our four screws threaded. The only thing we have left to do is put the bearing area, this bearing area, on the end of our floating screws. Let me show you my setup here. We want this, we want the tip of the bearing area to match the bottom of the blind hole in the fixed jaw. So I've put a half inch drill bit in here out of the same set that I used to drill that blind hole. And I've set my compound up. To match that angle. Just eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be super precise. So now I'm going to set up, we'll uh, we'll hold these screws by the threads here. So I'm going to set up my collet chuck. The collet uh, won't hurt the threads. I'll bring you back. Our captive screws are finished. I'm going to put these way out of the way before I make a boo-boo. If you haven't got a collet chuck, you'll just have to use uh, aluminum protectors on your jaws or this is a set I made up a long time ago. In order to get into this area here, I've had to stick out my tool quite a bit. We'll have, we'll, uh, We'll go deep enough to get past the center drill. Here goes. Okay, I'm just going to turn a tiny flat on the end. Okay, I'm going to use my magnetic dial indicator. We want to go quarter inch, there's a hundred, two hundred, fifty, set my stop. I'm going to take a, uh, just a cut so I can get zero established on my cross slide. We're looking for about 219. Right now, zero on my dial gives me two.
267. So we, we will take 48 off. There's 30. That's a really nice fit. And the screw is bottoming in the bottom of the hole, not on the threads. There you have it, guys. That is the end of our screws. There may be some more playing around in the shoulder area and with the uh, retaining clip grooves. But for the most part, the vast majority, our screws are done. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy your shop time. Stay tuned for more.